Now, let me give you five times that the ministry gains financial dominion. The first one is when it experiences extraordinary financial favor. You can experience an extraordinary financial favor and by that gain financial dominion. I told you of uh, somebody, many of you already know the person I'm talking about, uh, who at the point of the ministry getting up, one day somebody said, I want to see you. And it's not like somebody that he was very close to at that time. And uh, he decided to go and see the person. And he walked to the person and the person said, okay, uh, you come with vehicles? They say yes and all of that. And the person packed some bags full of cash, physical cash, not check. And they loaded into a vehicle and they asked the vehicle to follow the man. And the man, when he saw the amount of money, drove right to the bank. When the bank saw the money, they called police. When they finished counting, it was three billion naira. Three B. Everything you are hearing about the bigness of the ministry started from that three B. That is how financial dominion began. Now lift your hand. As you step out of this place now, God shock you within one month. <laughs> so, uh, I said the first uh, way a ministry can gain financial dominion is by experiencing extraordinary financial favor. Just like the story I gave you. Another one is when its membership grows astronomically. When your membership grows astronomically, you experience financial dominion. Are you here? You know, uh, I've told you in business, that's what they call the lifetime value of a customer lifetime value of a customer the lifetime value of a customer is like this uh, I am selling uh, this thing now and Mr. A is a builder he needs this regularly so he comes around and uh, he goes to the other man the other man tells him this is 5,000 naira. He goes to the other person, he says to him, it's 5,200. He goes to the other one, he tells him it's 5,100. He comes to me and I tell him it's 4,005. Now, I am selling with a gain of only 50 naira. These other ones are trying to sell with big gain. So he buys from me. He's happy, he goes back home. And then the next day he comes and buys again. Next day he comes and buys again. Next day he comes and buys again. Because what he's working with is cheaper than what others are. So he's getting more customers. And he keeps shopping from me. By the time he has shopped from me 10 times, uh, this man is trying to get 500 naira once. This one came 10 times. Now I've gotten the 500 naira. And because he trusts me, he keeps coming. He keeps coming. By the time he's been with me for more than two years, I've made about five million from him. You're not with me. Now, these other ones who wanted to get 500 at once lost him. He never came back. Are you still with me? But my not making quick gain from him, keeping him for long, made him a lifetime customer. That's what happens to churches that don't raise too much money. That's the difference between young churches that raise money quickly. The young churches that raise money quickly have money to buy land very fast. The pastor buys a car very fast, but they don't retain members. So their lifetime value of a customer never translates to wealth for their church. 
They just want people to give because the person is in a hurry to live a big life. But if the people came to the church and the pastor come down and they just act as if he ignored them, and where his friend is making five million, he's making just five hundred thousand and no challenge, and the people stay. The lifetime value of those people giving week by week by week by week by week for 20 years is more important than what he can get at any point. You are not hearing me. So the more you multiply that number of people and they keep giving. So people say, ah, that church, eh, they don't have money. That's at the beginning. The more the crowd gathers and the more they are consistent, you will find out that money becomes natural. That's why many of the prophetic churches, they have money quickly and they fizzle out quickly because they keep asking. You are not hearing me here. They keep asking. But if you keep building membership, you will find out that over time, you will have financial dominion. Number three, the third time a ministry gains financial dominion is when it develops multiple channels of income. If you develop multiple channels of income, you begin to have financial dominion. Some ministries just stay on tithing alone. Some ministries stay on raising money alone. But there are others that begin to build schools, begin to build one project after another, that can begin to bring in more sources of income. Over time, as the ministry gets bigger, those things begin to sustain the ministry. If you're here, say yes. yes. If you go to somewhere like the United States, churches are the Catholic church. People are not giving offerings and anything much anymore because it's a post-Christian uh, society. You're not with me. You see, the only reason you think America is a Christian nation is because you're in Nigeria and you relate with Americans because of preachers you know. But those preachers you know, nobody knows them in America. No, you're not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me? And most of the ones that are known have no voice. They just play with the society and compromise with everything. You are not hearing me. Do you see the riot that happened in America last week when they canceled abortion, something in the Supreme Court? Huh? Can you go online and check all the big pastors that you know if any one of them made a statement in support of, ab of ending abortion? Just go online. Go go anyone that you know. The reason is that America has gone into a post-Christian era and most of them are scared to talk. Because if they talk, they lose their income. If they talk, they call them haters and people scatter their ministry online. So they just keep quiet. Have you seen any of the American pastors you know preach against homosexuality? Huh? Those who used to preach against it seven years ago, ten years ago, today, Ah, uh, they, they don't go there at all. It's not a discussion. The reason is because America is post-Christian. You are not hearing me. Are you with me? They've moved on from the basic Christianity. They don't even talk, talk about it. Now, churches in America are struggling financially because their giving has stopped. You are not hearing me. There used to be a time when Pentecostal pastors in America were very rich, faith pastors and all of that. Now they are not again. Are you with me? They are not again. And all of that. Now the problem is the people are not giving. Now those ministries that set up so many things that was bringing resources for them, if you go to a place like Houston now, some of the big hospitals in Houston are owned by Catholic churches and Methodist churches. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Uh, some of them have schools, universities, and all of that. They're bringing income for them. So they set up things that sustain their assignment. I hope you're getting what I'm talking to you. 
the certain things that sustain the assignment. Some of them made investments. Something like Church of God in Christ and all of that. They took the money their pastors were paying in as well as uh, whatever, retirement things and all that, and put in major investments. And the money keeps coming back to them. Many of the old churches in America, like uh, Assemblies of God and all that, took money from the retirement fund of their pastors, made major investments, and money keeps coming every time. Some of them have shares in companies like Apple, some companies like all of these big, are you still with me here? And the money comes back. So if you have things like that, it gives you sources of income. And as a pastor, you should think about that, that as your church is growing, you should also have major channels of income. Am I clear? Oh dear. Are you with me? That's one of the ways to gain financial dominion because some of these things, you know, when we preach faith, many times we don't preach sense to. But your impact, we must add sense to faith. I can't hear your amen. amen. The next one, when does a church gain financial dominion in ministry? When it operates a financial stewardship system. When it operates a financial stewardship system against financial dominion. When you are people... Uh, are trained to give. I have a pattern of tithing, a pattern of partnership in your assignment. There are churches that have this pattern and it helps them. Some churches don't do it, uh, but they have a way through their teachings and all that of committing their members to financial stewardship. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? There are some of you here that have 500 members, 300 members, but less than 20 members per tithes regularly. You don't have a financial stewardship program. You're not teaching them and you're not enforcing it. And because of that, many of them are not committed. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Yes. Now, it has to be that, for example... Nobody should ever be a head of department in your church or a leader in any cadre of your church who doesn't pay tithe that you are aware of. If they're not paying tithe, they must leave your leadership. It doesn't matter even if it's your wife. Let her wife you at home. Are you, are you hearing me here? My person must leave you with leadership. Now, you have to establish a financial a stewardship system. We are people, as they end their money, they know they're accountable to the church. Hello? Uh, are you here? Yes, uh, now, I know that uh, you keep hearing people say, oh, Titan is not biblical, this and all of those things and all of that. Well, it's okay that it's not biblical for them. It is biblical for me. Uh, so and so changes his mind. So and so changes his mind. So when he says he's going to hell, you join him too. That he changed his mind doesn't mean his mind was correct before. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me here today? We don't change because they changed. We know what we believe and we are persuaded in what we believe. He wasn't persuaded before. Am I talking to somebody here? So don't get into any of those trash. Because uh, I know people keep sharing things online. Oh, so so and so. He said, Titan is no longer real. So so and so. He said, See, did not work. So so and so. He said, Pastors are eating too much money. So so and so. Everybody is talking their own. Now, all I'm asking you to do is this ignore them. And set up a system in your church and preach what you believe. Oh, dear God. Is anybody hearing me here too? One of the things that hurts young pastors is not knowing what they believe. Know what you believe and stand on it. Are you with me? The people that know, even if you are preaching something that is not right, at least let it be that you are convinced. Uh, don't you see some of these uh, people that preach all manner of things? carry bag and Bible and come to your house and harass you every morning. Eh? And sell a, a, a wake-up book to somebody who is already waken, woken up. 
You are not, is anybody hearing me here? How can you see me? I am awake talking to you. Tell me to buy awake. Was I sleeping when you came? Is anybody hearing me? <laughs> no, no, no. But do you notice the boldness with which they preach their wrong doctrine? Huh? Look at the Mormons who believe in a new Bible. And they will leave their countries and come to Nigeria. They will spend so much. The ones from Nigeria will spend their own money. Do you know that no Mormon missionary that comes to Nigeria is sponsored by the church? No. According to their doctrine, as you are growing up, you are saving to have at least one year of mission work. So every of those white people you come to Nigeria, they pay their flight, they pay for their feeding, they save for that one year journey. It's their missionary assignment. Everybody must do their own. You are not hearing me. That's a stewardship system. Am I wasting my time with you? They teach them until it grabs them. Now, with their wrong doctrine, they do all of that. Sir, now you, you're afraid of you preaching something. People will say, ah, nah, eh, I don't believe in Titan. If they don't believe, you believe. Set up the system. Are you with me? I don't believe in first verse. If they don't believe, you believe. Set up your system. Inside that church, there are people who will die hard believers. You are not hearing there are people who are diehard. I told you of a man that was attending this church. And uh, he wasn't born again. The wife was born again. He wasn't born again. And then one time he followed them. He came to church and had me talk about tithing. And he paid. He went back, packaged tight and paid. And something supernatural happened. He had a breakthrough. And he began a practice of tithing. He traveled to the U.S., met another man, and he told the man. When they were talking, the man complained about the business that we are doing together, how some things were at this. He said, you are the problem of this business. His partner in the U.S. said, what do you mean? He said, you don't pay your tithe. The man said, you they go to church. He said, I know they go, but I they pay tithe. Where do you pay? He mentioned Gateway. They called me from the U.S. Because the man now, he had to convince the man. He said, if you want us to continue in this partnership, you must start paying tight. I don't want Devara in my business. It's, you are not hearing me. I mean, that is this. I told you of the Muslim man that called me and said that he wants to start paying tight. I said, excuse me. He said, you're my father in the Lord. I must pay tithe there. And I said, I know the bomb Muslim. <laughs> and the bomb Christians. But the man, no agree. No agree. He said, you're my father in the Lord. I listen to you every day. As you are preaching on radio, I'm listening to you. He said, you don't understand. Some of those are people. As we gather there in the morning, we listen to you. He said, I've recorded more than 60 of your messages. He said, my father in the Lord. So, tight is coming. <laughs> he had me teaching on tithing and he wants to pay. So, why people are arguing in church? Others are ready to do it. People you didn't even ask. So, never, never submit your doctrine to opposers. Stand on what you believe and God will back it up. I can't hear your amen. So, the fifth way that the church is getting financial dominion is when it only does what is commanded part time. If you are going to get financial dominion, you do only what is commanded part time. That means that your ministry is never in debt and is never in stress. It's never under stress. Why churches, some of them are not in financial dominion is because they're in competition. A small church that is growing uh, doesn't have to have a billion naira to have financial dominion. Financial dominion at your level means that every need you have is met. 
Come on, are you hearing me here today? It's met with comfort. Now, at that point, what helps you to meet every need comfortably is that you only do what is commanded by time. You are not busy competing with A and B and C, trying to outdo the other person. No. You do what God asks you to do, and you celebrate it, and you move on. Are they hearing me? Now, the moment you begin to do that, you begin to see the revelation of the grace and the power of God. So, I say to you, there are five things, five times when it means regains financial dominion. Number one is when it experiences extraordinary financial favor. Number two, when its membership grows astronomically. Number three, when it develops multiple channels of income. Number four, when it operates a financial stewardship system. Number five, when it only does what is commanded by time. Question is this, these five things I just mentioned, which one is applying to you? And how many of them are you working on because you want to gain financial dominion? Because many times all we do is pray, 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 pray. But these are the things that help a church gain financial dominion. Are you with me? I know our income when we are a thousand. I know when we are two or three thousand. I know when we are four or five thousand. I know when we are at that level. And I know our income as we rose higher. The moment a church rises higher, income changes. You are not hearing me here today. Income changes. You are no longer... Are you still here? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. You are no longer... Uh, listen, listen, listen. If you have 1,000 members today and they all came to church and everybody just gave 1,000 naira, it's 1 million. Huh? Uh, are you with me? If you have 100 members and all of them gave... Uh, Five five thousand, you still don't have one million. I don't think you get me. If people are tired of me, I'm tired of you too. Can I go and rest? Uh, are you okay? I said if you have one thousand members and each person gave one thousand naira, that's one million. If you have one hundred members and each one of them get five thousand naira, do you still have one million? So Building your numerical strength is key to having money without stress. I don't think you are here. Do you get it? So as a church grows, you just see that income changes. And then uh, you do what is commanded part time. You operate a financial stewardship system and you develop multiple channels of income. Now, now, now. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to another thing. and uh, I, I'm not going to stress you. I'm just going to get into a few things now and then we begin to minister to you. Somebody tonight, your story will change. Amen. I thought you would say amen better. Amen. Let me give you five, fin- five plat- faith platforms for financial dominion. Five faith platforms for financial dominion. As we are living here today, I want you to pray these scriptures. All through this month, over your person, over your ministry, over your church finances. Pray them over this. You may have other ones you've been praying before. Add these ones to them. Luke 22, 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without pause and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Can you lift your hand? Because you sent you, you will lack nothing. Let me repeat a second time. Because he sent you, you will lack nothing. Finally, because he sent you, you will lack nothing. Jesus asked them, when I sent you, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. How can he send me and I lack? Are you with me? How can he send me and I am in debt? How can he send me and there are things I can't handle? It's not possible. As you are hearing me today, whatever it will take for your money to come, let it happen. Second Corinthians 9, 8 to 11. It's and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye, always having 
all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You can read the remaining part of it, but this is my concern. Please get back there. Everybody look at it. If you are still alive and breathing well, can you point to that scripture and declare God is able? God is able. Come on loud that God is able. able. To make all grace. grace. I say point at that scripture and shout God is able. able. As you are pointing, let that be your point of contact. God is able. able. To make all grace. grace. Abound toward me. That I always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work shout amen like thunder i want you to go back with the mentality that this verse is not an exaggeration please put that back on there i don't know what you did this place empty for put it back on God is able to make how many grace? All grace grace abound toward you. That you. Do do you notice that word? Always. That word is a a key word. Always. Somebody say always. Always. So anytime you are not having all sufficiency, something is wrong. Always having all sufficiency. In how many things? All things. May abound to how many good work? Brothers and sisters, it's either Paul was writing hyperbole here. It's either uh, exaggerating God's capacity or this is possible. Is it possible? Oh dear, dear. Is it possible? So we're going to pray it today. If God is able, then let God do something. I can't hear your amen. Amen. How can I be coming to church and uh, pastoring, walking under his authority, and a cattle on a thousand hills are his own, and even one leg of cattle he can't give me? <laughs> you know, yeah. Is anybody hearing me? They, they tell me that my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and even one toe of a cattle I can't find. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it will happen. Is anybody hearing me? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because I know how I treat my children. Believe me, I know how I treat. Sometimes I even feel bad when I finish doing some things for them. As I hope I'm not overdoing it. I know that my children, I want them to be happy. Come on, are you with me? Uh, Are you with me? I want them to be happy. My daughter was was traveling a few days on Sunday uh, to the U.S. And I said, what do you want to do? He said, okay, I'll just take a few days holiday. And then from there, I take some holiday, go for a week in Canada, see a few friends, and then come back to the U.S. and then come to Nigeria and all of that. I said, okay, God bless you. And then, of course, somebody called from the U.S. and said, I'm going to pay her tickets. So they paid her ticket, she left. And before she was going, she came to me and said, Daddy, won't you give me money? And she had a budget. And I gave her mother about twice that budget. Now, I did that just to spoil her. Just to make her feel like my father is Esha dad. Are you hearing me? And when she left, I sat in my room and I told myself, I said, can God do something like this? Seriously, I just said I was saying, can God do something like this? Uh, does anybody here think God can do that? Yes. Do you think it will give God pleasure to just spoil you a little? Yes. Huh? Yes. How I felt that day, do you think God can feel like that? Yes. Then let it happen for you. Yes. Before the last day of July, let it happen for you. Yes. Before the last day of July, let it happen for you. Before the last day of July, let it happen for you. Before the last day of July, let it happen for you. So it's possible. Amen. Amen. And it it doesn't take much. Praise the Lord. Trust him. 
trust him. Let's go to the next one. If you are still with me, say yes. yes. You can read Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 13. Let up. Please write it down. We're going to read. We're not going to read all of it. Maybe we'll just read on to verse 6. It's our right shine for the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Keep going. Uh, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Will that glory be seen upon you? Yes. Now look at what happens when his glory is upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now, now it's not that just that they are visiting. Look at how they visit. Look at the next verse. He said, lift up thy eyes round about and see all there gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Next verse. They shall, then thou shalt see and flow together. And thy heart shall, be, shall fear. He said, you will see what is going to happen and you'll be fear and be enlightened because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. That word forces there is the same word with riches and the forces or the riches of the Gentiles shall come. So they're not coming empty and they're carrying things to you. Yeah. Let that happen now. Yeah. Oh dear. I said, let that happen now. Yeah. These are platforms on which we are going to pray and make a insist on God. Now, your church is just uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, struggling. But look at what he says. He said, the multitude of uh, uh, trailers shall cover your place. I, I didn't hear you here now. What, what do you call camel? Camel is a bottom bearing animal in those days. Huh? When you are transporting goods, what do you use? He said, the month of trailers are coming. The dromedaries of Midian and Alpha, all day from Sheba shall come. And they shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. So this is what is coming. So I want to believe God that the years of lack has ended. And they don't have to be born again to bring it. They just have to be human beings. I didn't hear you. The earth is a loss and a fullness there. Please listen to me. The reason many young churches are not doing well is that they believe that their resources are tied to the people in the church. That's not true. And I want you to believe today that more than 90% of your income will come from outside. Please, can I hear you say amen well? God can use anybody. I say God can use anybody. God can send anybody. God can command anyone. From today, let a new day begin. Look at uh, Ezra chapter 6, 6 to 12, New Living Translation. So King Darius sent this message. Now, therefore, Tatadiah, governor of the provinces west of the Euphrates River, and Sheta Bozeniah, and your colleagues and other officials west of the Euphrates River, stay away from there. He's talking about the building of the temple. Next verse. Do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its original site. And do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. He says, number one, stay away. Number two, don't hinder them, but do not look at the next verse. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews. He said, number one, stay away. Number two, don't disturb them. But number three, you must help them. Come on, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So if all people stay away from your church, Amen. they won't molest your church, Amen. but they must help your church. He said, moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild the, this temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs without delay. Come on, are you hearing me here today? So all those evil people that we are told not to attack you are also commanded to release Are you still hearing me here? From my task collector in the province west of Euphrates River. So that the work will not be interrupted. 
So it's an abomination for you to start a building and it's interrupted. Lift your hand from today. That work will not be interrupted. I say from today, that work will not be interrupted. I say from today, that work will not be interrupted. We can read the remaining part, but not now. Okay, let me start. L- let me read the next verse. I'll stop there for time. Step. It says, give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed. Give them whatever is needed. Can you accept this level of, be- of faith? Can you lift your hand? Whatever is needed for the assignment, may the Lord commandment to bring to you. I'm going to repeat it only once. If you don't take it, you lose it. Lift your hand. Whatever is needed for your assignment, may God command men to give it to you. Amen. Sit down. Isaiah 61, 4 to 9. Isaiah 61, 4 to 9. These are platforms I want you to stand on and then see the release of your testimony. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the worst cities, the desolations of many generations. Verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed their flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your playmen and your vine dressers. Verse 6. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Now he puts a colon. I've I've made you say this again and again. Anytime you see a column, it means the next thing explains the former. Come on, are you with me? They taught you that in primary school. Come, are you here? So let's look at the column now. He said, Man, we call you the ministers of God. You'll be named priest of the Lord. Now he says, What I'm saying next now is tied to what I said before. What is he saying next? He said, You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall you boast yourself so who are these men that are calling you priests of God huh Gentiles he said these Gentiles we know that you are the priest of God he said men shall he said you shall eat of the riches of these guys you are not with me I don't know whether my friend Apostle Estrada is watching now but I shared the, I tell the story on Sunday and he went after service, he said he was, he laughed because he was watching a Sunday service from the U.S. He laughed. Me and him went somewhere when I went on my holiday a few days ago. And then, uh, normally, I'm not a person of uh, uh, chains and bangles and gold and silver and all of that. All my life, I've never worn a chain before. I... Not because I have anything against it. It it just doesn't fit me. You are not hearing me. I've never worn anything on the hand apart from wristwatch. I don't, all of that, I don't, I don't really bother myself about that. Now, are you here? Uh, So, we are going somewhere in the Caribbean. And then he just said, let's go to go to the gold and diamond shop. And if you know him, you know he's very childlike at heart. He, he likes to chop life. You are not hearing me. <laughs> so I followed him. And then we enter there and all of that. And uh, he wears big rings and he has gold everywhere and all that. So he brought out this ring and said, well, I bought this somewhere back and, in and all of that. I want to get a new ring and all of that. So he brought out this one. Brought out this one. I want to trade it in. Can I trade it in here and all of that? So they were evaluating that and all of that and the rings were about $14,000. What he was wearing and all of that. So he gave it to them to evaluate it and to sort it out and all of that. So he said, uh, uh, check on that ring. I said, I don't wear that kind of thing. I said, where I come from? That is called iniquity. <laughs> I said, that's called iniquity. Uh, I said, so, uh, where, is, where he was talking, so I went and picked up the something. And I asked him, how much is it? He said, $27,000. I said, ah, uh, $27,000. I said, well, I said, it's cheap. <laughs> I said, if I, used, if I was wearing things like this, this is the kind I would buy. But since I don't wear it, even if I buy it, what will I do with it? Are you hearing me? 
Why am I talking? I was, me put one thousand dollars on that thing. You, you do know what you're talking about. I can wear it. Praise the Lord. I just, I just made some joke and all that. I just forgot it. I just acted. I, they didn't need it anyway. Now, in the midst of that, he's trying to start talking about his own or buying something for his wife and all of that. And he talks to this man. I'm just trying to show you what it means to eat the riches of the Gentiles. He talks to this man. He said, no. Me and this guy. He said, this guy is coming from Nigeria, from Africa. He said, he's highly anointed. He began to tell the man testimonies of what he has seen in my ministry as I was ministering. Just sharing with the man. We just entered his shop. This is a big gold shop. Multi-million gold shop. And this is the, man, the owner. He's talking to him. An Indian guy. And the man said, what? His son. Also working with him that is going to take over the business. He we said, what? He's telling him about what he has seen in my life. And he's talking about what God has done in his life and all that. The man is listening. We finish. He said, it's a blessing that we came to buy from you. We finish. Sorted out his own thing and all that. And we wanted to go. I didn't buy anything. We are walking out. And this man that we came to his shop, checked out it and we didn't buy. And we are walking out. The man called us. I said, come back here. You people are ministers of God. You need to bless my shop. And wrote a check of $2,000. I said, take and bless. Nobody asked him for a dime. Just walking into a shop, you didn't buy and you collected $2,000. No, you didn't hear me. That's a good way to chop life. <laughs> Do you understand that favor speaks? And when you carry it, you actually carry it. Am I talking to somebody here? When you carry it, you actually carry it. Receive grace. So they will call you the priest of God. Why did that man release that money? He called us the priest of God. And we ate the riches. Did you get it? That's your portion. And then for time's sake, I'm going to close very early today because I've walked my body and I don't want to take things for granted. Are you with me? And after this, many of you that have tried to see me have not been able to see you. If we close early, I will talk to one or two of you and then before five o'clock, and then when I'm done now, we can take a few questions and then wrap things up. Is that okay? Uh, is that okay? Yes. So I can sit down and be able to rest and all of that because uh, the journey is still long. Uh, is God doing amazing things? Many of you didn't join us in the vigil on Friday, but it was brutal on the devil. And God was so merciful. Do you see the kind of rain that fell in Port Harcourt on Saturday? What of if that rain fell on Friday? We were here on Friday. I read the record. They said there's a chance of rain and they gave the percentage chance of rain and all of that. And they gave the time the rain was starting and God didn't allow one drop. Those thousands that were gathered in the different overflows. If rain started, where would they enter? Because all this place was parked. Outside was parked. All the halls were parked. The, 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 park, the parking place there. You go there, no space left. People on the road. Aye, what will you do? But God spared us. Of the rain, and I trust He will do that all through the month. Yeah. I can't hear your amen. Yeah. God helped us, and I believe that it's a brutal time for the devil. I thought you say amen. amen. Please join us in prayers and trust the Lord that before the vigils of destiny are over, the city will feel God. Amen. amen. Uh, amen. amen. Okay, let's look at five preparations for financial dominion and then we close this there. 
five preparations for financial dominion. The first one is set up financial management and accountability systems. Set up financial management and accountability systems. If you are going to work in financial dominion, please, you must understand that the time of church money is your money has ended. I don't know what church you trained under. I don't know what your pastor taught you. I don't know how you start operating your ministry. But as long as the church account is your personal account, God won't give you financial dominion. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Decide what is your own. Take your own and step away. Did you hear me? Sit down with your people or whatever, however you run your leadership and know what your own is and step away. And every assistant pastor who steals from the church, I will tell you this, and I'm going to tell you free of charge. Many years later, when you grow up, you you'll ask whether I told you the truth or not. If you steal, the moment you start your ministry, you will stay in poverty until you do restitution. If you think I am lying, there are some people here today who where they are financially now is embarrassing them. But they don't have enough boldness and enough humility to go back to where they came from because of the things they stole and to say I am wrong. They put in every effort. They fast, they pray, they do all kinds of things but they will not see the level of financial breakthrough they want. Why? That tips. That record, go back. Sit down with your pastor. Tell him, sir, when I was here, this is what I did. I am sorry, and I want you to pray for me. Let him pray for you and release you. If they hear my voice, say yes. If you don't do that, you will say, ah, I don't believe in restitution. What you believe doesn't matter. What is reality is what is reality. He said, but God has forgiven me. Ah, uh, God has forgiven you. You will go to heaven, but you will be poor here on earth. The way you are looking at me. Are you hearing me? God has forgiven you. You will go to heaven, but you will be poor here on earth. Because the scripture cannot be broken. Go back. Tell them you are sorry. He that is faithful in that which is least. Is faithful also in watch. Luke 16 verse 10. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse 11. Put verse 11. If therefore you have been faithful in the righteous mammon, if you have not been faithful in the righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Verse 13. No, okay, go back to verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who shall give you that which is your own? Now go to verse 13 now. No servant can serve two masters. For either we hurt the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So all of you that think that this is just casual statement, please listen to me. God was talking about faithfulness and he talks about when you are unfaithful, you are serving mammon. Are you hearing me? Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, the church is not your piggy bank. Church account is not your personal money. They are not donating that money for you to live big. They are donating that money for the assignment you say God called you to do. Your marriage is not the assignment. Your father's house is not the assignment. Please don't wreck your future with a little for today. Because what God is bringing is huge. Every time you see people who are very, very, very effective in ministry, and yet their finances are meager, they are touching what is not their own. And anytime you start stealing, prepare for a hard life. Uh, is anybody hearing me? Are they hearing me? Anytime you start stealing, prepare for a hard life. The moment you touch, you start stealing, this favor becomes normal. 
And you don't need the things you are stealing to have. You don't need it. Cut your coat according to your cloth. And walk with God. And then begin to live by faith. And God will always make sure the provision is there. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And when you grow bigger, the money will be there. Amen. amen. But a lot of people, you know, anytime, I said to you earlier, anytime you notice somebody who is always looking for something that he cannot afford at this level, very soon the person starts stealing. You are not hearing me here. The car you can't afford, hate it until you can afford it. Anytime you say it's a nonsense. You are not hearing me. Hate it until you can afford it. Not that when I mean hate it, I don't mean say nobody should buy it. Because when it comes to your mind, it's a nonsense. I'm not buying it now. Why don't we buy it? It's not because I don't have money. I just don't want to buy this car. A day is coming. You walk into the place, you sign one check, it's done. Receive that grace. I can't hear your amen. Amen. The second preparation for financial dominion is multiply membership and raise men instead of money. Multiply membership. Raise men and not money. Teach them to be wealthy. Teach them to do business. Spend time in raising them. Just multiply membership. That's the preparation for this financial dominion. So many of the people that you run to, anytime you're talking about financial dominion for pastors, all they will tell you is simply God is going to give you favor. But brothers and sisters, favor is only a platform. Favor is not a pattern. No, you didn't hear me. Favor is not a pattern. Favor is a platform. And when God gives you one favor, he expects that you can take that favor and create systems that will sustain it. Oh. Are you hearing me? A businessman, God gives you a favor. You hit a business and you make your first 20 million. Fine. God expects that that 20 million, you sit down, plan on how to invest it. I told my church members about, is it last week or two weeks ago? I said, the best place to be is that when you grow to a certain level in life, you won't need prayer for money. Because you have set up things that keep producing money. You are not hearing. Any businessman that has been doing business for 20 years, who is still needing prayer for money, something is wrong. You can ask God for favor. You can ask the same thing for church. Hey, 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 people, are you hearing me here? Because money responds to goods and services, is not favor. They are not with me. So he set up something that keeps bringing the money. So please listen. Build, multiply membership. If you grow the church, if you intentionally, hey, hello, are you here? I told you many years ago, a young man, a bishop here in this port court, came to me and he said, Pastor George, eh, I don't like the way you pastor. I said, sir, what is it? He said, look at the crowd I saw in your church the other day. I I didn't know he came around the church. He said, you are not making them give. So you're always struggling financially. I said, who told you I'm struggling? He said, no, you are not living at the level you are supposed to live. He said, if you allow me one Sunday, just In fact, I am inviting myself. I said, laughing. I said, no, you're not coming. He said, no, I went to so-and-so. I raised money for him. I went to so-and-so. I raised money for him. I was mentioned what he raised. He said, I'm coming to church. When I'm finished with those people, anywhere they hide the money, they'll bring it. He talked. I said, you're not coming. And I never allowed him to come. If he came, I didn't notice because I ignored him. You are not hearing. When you come around and nobody welcomed you, won't you go? Or can I tell you something? That his church has collapsed. It has gone down. You can't keep treating people like that and succeed. 
Anybody you see in your church now that looks like he has money, you ask him today, ask him tomorrow, ask him another day, ask him another day. And even if he's done good day, after some time, he starts dodging you. When you notice that some people in the church now nah, don't pick your um, call, these things have started being created. Be careful. Build men. Don't raise money and erase men, no. Teach them, challenge them, push them, let them grow. And give it time. Give it time. You're not rushing anywhere and you're not dying today. Are you planning to die this way? You will have these things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And believe me, over time, you have money and uh, you are not struggling. Because some of you are sitting here now. By this time next year, you are in your own house. And then gradually, the journey becomes easier. You are not hearing me. Do you know there's a time you come in your life, you look around, almost everything that makes a person comfortable, you already have it. The only thing you are living for now is how to help people. You are not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me? That's what you are living for, how to help people. How to make sure that the people closest to you also enjoy life. I want to spoil my children. I was asking my last son. I said, ah, have you been driving? He said, of course, he has been driving. I wanted him to go and learn to drive. I didn't know he had started driving. I said, okay, then I'm going to get you a driver's license. Why? Because earlier in the year, the senior sister came around and said, uh, I don't like my car again. Daddy, I need a new car. I looked at the car. If I dash it to some of you now, you, 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 you with some assault. Beautiful car. I said, why? He said, the way they used it and all of that, when I was not around, I don't like it. I have two options, quarrel with her or not quarrel with her, but I measure that. <laughs> and I have the cash. So I bought a new car. And the brother came and said, now that she has got a new car, I want this car. That my children, are you? Shouldn't they chop life? If I had a father like that, I would have chop. I didn't have. Now that I am somebody like that, they must chop. What I suffer, they shouldn't suffer. Anybody believe that here? Oh, yeah. So, I told him to take the car. Sent it to them. Walk on it. Put it in good condition, change everything that needs to be changed. Let him have a car. So right now he's a car owner. Wouldn't it be good if you're in secondary school and own a car? Wouldn't it be good? Uh, but I couldn't have done that 10 years ago. Not that this church was not here then. But I had too many things that were on my list that time. Many of those things are not on my list again. That's how life goes. Do you understand what I'm talking to you? Many of those things are not on my list again. So I can afford to squander a little money. Is that okay? I can afford to do some things I couldn't do before because all the things that we are there are not there. And I'm not a covetous person. I don't need everything around the world. The ones I have, what am I using them for? <laughs> the ones I have, what am I using them for? I am a contented person. Are you with me? Sometimes I'm actually online asking myself, well, okay, what do I buy now? And there's nothing to buy because I'm contented. Well, some of the things I need are there. I asked myself, what do I buy? 
I don't know what to buy. I travel. I can't buy anything for myself. Because anything I need, people give me. You are not hearing me. Anything I need, people give me. So why do you have to struggle? Why am I sharing this with you? Because you get to a point in your life. What you are thinking about now is a, it's just a stage. Just a stage. Give it time. Am I talking to someone? Give it time. You look back, it's not there. I stretch my hand toward you. May God command exceptional release for you. Give it time. Even your income level will change. With time. Are you with me? Ezekiel 36, 10 to 12. He said, I will multiply men upon you and all the house of Israel. Oh, it's really 3.30, so I'm going to stop in a few. Just write it down, Ezekiel 36, 10 to 12. Number three. Be addicted to financial covenant obedience and generosity. I'm talking about preparations for financial dominion. Be addicted to financial covenant obedience and generosity. If you want to make sure that your finances don't last, don't have somebody you are sowing into his life. Just don't. One day you are going to look back and see dryness all around. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Hey, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. My accountant is sitting over there. She will tell you. I don't talk to her about giving money to my father in the Lord. She knows what to do. It's not a discussion. And believe me, from January until now, it's only once I've told my father in the Lord, okay, physically I'm giving him a check. The money is transferred. I don't call him. It just gets transferred. I don't call him. I'm not, I'm not say, oh, Daddy, uh, uh, we sent tithe or we sent seed or we say, uh, please pray for us. I don't call him. I just, he just gets a lot. He knows it came from us. And then he blesses us and we move on. It's only when I go to see him, I say, okay, uh, Daddy, pray for us and all of that. And he just blesses us and I move. You must walk in that. And learn to walk in generosity. Praise the Lord. This is second half of the year. As we are ending the last month, I looked at three big fathers of the faith that I respect a lot. Not my father in the Lord, other fathers of the faith. And uh, I said, okay, let me surprise them on, as we are on, the third, on the night crossing to the first. So I sent money to A, I sent money to B, I sent money to C, not from church, from my personal account. As a seed, I never called any one of them. And then in the night, about 1 a.m., you know, about, yes, 1 a.m., going to 2 and all of that, one of them, one of the big men in the nation, he called after he saw the lot. I was already sleeping. I saw it in the morning. I said, okay, let me try. I tried his line. He wasn't going. So I knew that, okay, he doesn't. Later again, he called. I picked it. I said, I saw what you sent. He said, now my God bless you. My God, he finished speaking. I said, thank you. And uh, I left. The other one called. So I'm outside the country now. I saw what you said. I know that. My God honor you. He finished. I know that. And he said, listen to me. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Before that evening, no, by the next evening, one person gave me a check that was about what I gave the three of them. As I moved again, within the next day, somebody gave me another. 
Oh, no, you don't understand. You see, I know this thing works. Because it consistently works for me. May it work for you. I thought I would hear a better amen. Why do you think I was joyful in giving my daughter the money? Because I got something. And when you are happy, you, are, you release. Come on, are you getting what I'm talking When you are happy, you release. God can use anything. It may be small, it may be big, but it shows you a sign. Are you with me? I stretch my hand toward you. From today, may you have a heart of generosity. Amen. All of this thing, if somebody is cheating me, somebody wants my money. Who wants your money? Amen. Uh -uh. Amen. Amen. Who wants your money? No, that's not how these things work. Believe God. Be addicted to financial covenant of it and generosity. Proverbs chapter 11, 24 to 25. There is that scatter it and yet increase it. And there is that withhold it more than is meat. And it tended to what? Poverty. Next verse. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that water it shall be watered also himself. Are you there? Are you there? I speak over you today. The Lord command life to water you. Amen. These are preparations for financial dominion. I say number one, set up financial management accountability systems. Number two, multiply membership and raise men instead of money. Number three, be addicted to financial covenant obedience and generosity. Number four, produce supernatural proofs that inspire partnership. Produce supernatural proofs that inspire partnership. I was preaching for God man last uh, week. And then uh, I decided not to just do a teaching but go into the uh, ministrations and all of that. And what the ministration was going on? I didn't know somebody was being touched by God. I finished. I want, wanted to. Uh, I walked away. And God man called me and said, "No, uh, there's so and so person. He mentioned the person is the uh, national head of a particular company in Nigeria. He said the person watched the program and all of that, and uh, he said that I should give you this check for Gateway Church." I've never met the person before. I've not met the person till now. But the person just wrote a check. Why? Because the person was happy at the ministry that was produced. Are you with me? I, I hope I'm talking to somebody here. One of the ways to guarantee that you are not poor is that you are producing results. As long as your ministry is creating miracles, you can't be poor. They are not hearing me. The moment you are not producing results, you'll be begging for relevance. You'll be begging for help. People, are you hearing me? People don't give money to church because they like pastor. They give money because it's an investment. They saw fertile ground. Hey, are you still with me? They saw what? Fertile ground. The key. They trust God for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We I finished a service one day here. I was driving, going back home. I got a text, and somebody said. I'm a pastor. I mentioned the state where the person is in the U.S. He said, I just watched their program now. And uh, I feel like God wants our ministry to be paying tight to you. And I said, is that true? He said, yes. He said, send me your personal account. He said, we'll be paying tight 
to you. They just watch our program. Even this evening, tight came from them. It can't be tight on me. You are not hearing me. Are you guys okay? That if you produce result, you can't be, it won't be tight on you. Stop begging. Begging has no honor. I have never appealed to anybody since this church started for help. You didn't hear me. There's no father of faith and no mother of faith and no help of destiny have appealed for assistance since Gateway started. Produce results, you have assistance. I think I'm in the wrong house. He's saying, uh, uh, how can I be my father in the Lord? I'm suffering. Uh, Jehovah, is it not your father and you are suffering? <laughs> you are not hearing me. People, people, people are just very spooky. You say, how can George be my father in the Lord? I am suffering. He should help me. Is Jehovah not your father and you are suffering? Has he helped you? I will help you. Go call police. If you are, are you here? Stop allowing the devil cheat you. Produce results. Create miracles. And you'll find that that money will come. Money goes in the direction of results. Finally. Finally. Engage in territorial warfare until the land submits its riches. Engage in territorial warfare. Okay, sorry, the last one. I put as 28, 3 to 10. As 28, 3 to 10. When Paul, they saw him snake, beat him, he didn't die. And they healed Publius' father that was sick. And so the, the barbarians gave him what he needed. As chapter 28, 3 to 10. That's for number four. Number five, engage in territorial warfare until the land submits its riches. The land must submit its riches. Engage in warfare. Fight. And uh, pastor, in, uh, this land is very hard. There is no hard place. And there is no soft place. Every land needs contention. If you go to Lagos today, as beautiful as Lagos looks to be for ministry, there are pastors in Lagos who can't pay their school, children's school fees. Is that true? Suffering as if there is no God. So there is no place that is easy. You can be in the village and be poor. You can be in the village and be rich. There is no place that is easy. If you have my voice, say yes. Yes. A priest was in LL and turned LL to the visiting, to the pilgrimage center of Nigeria. In fact, at a certain time, from all of West Africa, people were coming to LL. Anybody remember? Padende? Huh? All of these things now that are fighting Mbaka. Mbaka is the only priest in Ankadi Church. Inside village, See the thousands upon thousands that follow him inside village. If you produce result, you produce wealth. If you are still with me, say yes. yes. Subdue the land. And you have the resources. So when you see pastors, when you say pray, they say, well, I can't pray. Uh, I, I, I don't understand. Things are so hard. That's the reason to pray. You wake up in the morning and you don't have food. Convert it to fasting. <laughs> you are not hearing me. If you make a vow today that you never ask anybody for money, God will show up for you. Come back. 
Pastor, how do you know? I did it. It worked for me. I won't beg, I won't borrow, I won't launch. I did it. It worked for me. So, I didn't say do for you all of the three, but at least try one of them. You didn't hear me, but I did the three. And they worked for me. So, I'm asking you today, subdue the powers of this land. And I will bow. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24, he said, rise ye up, take your journey. Pass over the river, and on, behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Hesham, and his land. Begin to possess it, and contend with him how? In battle. Stand to your feet. Lift your hand. Let me hear you say, my father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace for financial dominion. The land must submit to me. Open your mouth and begin to speak right now. People, please pray. Move up and down and pray. Don't be one of those sitting down and sleeping. Pray. After now, you said God didn't help you. Get up and pray. Sleep is not as important as your destiny. Get up and pray. Move around and pray. Your leg is not broken. You are not that tired. Move around and pray, man. Get up, sir. Walk up and down and speak something. Musicians, get on to worship. Shata Paradasha. If I can hear your voice, take care, Pasha. Shout amen like thunder. Okay, let's start from something very simple. Lift your hand and say, My father, I believe in the blessing. Tonight, let your blessing rest upon me. Now, open your mouth and cry out for that. I believe in the blessing. the worship team be here quickly I believe in the blessing oh God bless me indeed Somebody shout Amen. Lift the hand and say from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, from far, from near. Let men and women, let companies, let governments bring to me the forces of the Gentiles. Let it come now. Oh, pray your mouth and pray.
made a financial mistake, you're going to receive mercy now. You know, somebody was talking about some of the teachings. He said, Am I not the one that raises the money? I am the one walking in that location. I'm the one walking in that church. I raise the money. Listen. Even if you are the cashier in the bank or whatever, and you went out and got customers, you are the one that went to do marketing and they brought money. And you are the one that sat down there and counted the money and received it there. If you touch one naira out of it, you can go to jail for it. The mentality of a fool is what destroys the fool. That you raise the money doesn't make it your own. No, you didn't hear me. That you are the one in that location doesn't make it your own. You are the you are the marketer that went to market for a customer, got him to come and deposit money in the bank. You are the one that received it at the counter. But if you touch one naira out of it, you can go to jail. So the excuse is a demonic plan to wreck your destiny. Separate between what is your own and what is God's own. Am I talking to somebody here? And refuse to take his own. He said, I'm the one working hard. I'm the one working hard. That you work hard doesn't change anything. I pastor you in impact. Are you with me? Martina is there. The accountant is there. Ask them if I sign impact check. If I'm holding it. Anytime. All the guest business that came. They didn't see my signature on any check. They signed it and gave it out. I don't take any that. They didn't give me 10 carbon arrival from impact after this. But when you gave me your seed, that was my own. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You walk away from there. You have to know what is your own and what is not your own. Am I wasting your time? You have to know. No, but I'm the one. I'm the convener. This and that. You are the convener, but if you want the covenant to remain, stay away. Stay away. Lift your hand above your head. And let me hear you cry to God and say, My Father, I come to you by the blood of the covenant. Forgive every financial error. Oh God, forgive. Restore my favor. Restore my grace. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cry out to your God. Let them be broken right now. The land must give its best. Lift your hand and say, I command. Let the land release my inheritance. Every territorial spirit, every occult spirit, every mystery, hindering my release. Fire! Fire! Open your mouth and break the mystery. 
Karadasha Empatadaba Open your mouth and take authority. Let the land submit to me. Let the land bow. Submit to you. The businesses submit to you. Companies submit to you. Government submit to you. Institutions submit to you. Let them release what you need in the name of Jesus. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work please lift your hand if that scripture works let it work for you and i know it works oh dear jesus i know it works let it work for you may you see all grace miracle grace financial grace May you see all grace, Amen. teaching grace, Amen. crusade grace. Amen. May you see all grace, Amen. leadership grace, Amen. social impact grace, Amen. family life grace. Amen. May all grace abound toward you. Amen. May you have all sufficiency Amen. in all things at all times in the name of Jesus Christ. As you leave here now, I invoke extreme favor. Favor that people cannot understand. Favor that will alarm people. Favor that will make people think there is something bad you are doing. There is a way you will be rich as a female minister. They are wondering what, a, what are you giving the man, giving you the money? You are not hearing me. They are saying, Wait, they say, What is he doing? But it's coming. I thought I would hear your amen. It's coming. People will be jealous, tired. Are you with me? I remember the first time somebody got a contract of a billion dollars and he started working on the contract and the one that was in my office and he came with his traditional ruler and the chairman of the youth in his village and uh, there's their CDC or whatever chairman and they came he told them he was coming to Portaco with them and all of that and they discussed and all that so he brought them to my office so he told me, he said, Pastor, I want to see you. So I saw him. So I said, uh, what is that? He said, no. He said, there's nothing. I just brought them to see you so I can tell them this where I'm drawing from because very soon they're going to say I am using something. No, you didn't hear. He said, I brought them to see you so I should show them where I am drawing from. He said, because very soon, this thing that God just did for me now, very soon they're going to say, I use somebody. 
I did something. So I brought them here so they can know I'm not using anything other than God. He said, before the flow begins to come in, let them know I'm not using anything other than God. Brothers and sisters, that season open to you. Well, since you didn't say amen, let me change the channel. Will it happen for you in this season? Can you lift your two hands? If there is still a God in heaven, and is there still a God in heaven? Let what he spoke over you be revealed now. Let the reality of abundance happen to you now. Let the power to get wealth come to you now. Let resources that were withheld be released to you now. Between now and the end of this month, as the Lord liveth, receive more than you had in the last one year. In the name of Jesus. Strange partners from around the nations, let them come to you. And I pray for you right now that between now and the end of the month, God will allow you to create miracles in people's lives that will astound them. That their response will be to give. In the name of Jesus. This month of financial dominion, may somebody have at least two cars given to him or her. Just one, one person will receive at least two cars to show that this is a different month. May lands be handed over to you. As the Lord live it, before whom I stand, you will not be here at the, at the meeting next month without a proof that money came. And let it be drastic. The virus are rebuked. Amen. No more dry hand. Amen. It is done. Amen. Give the Lord a clap as you get it. As we are closing now, let me, those of you who are sowing a seed or giving you a tithe, can you come very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. I've, I've really spent more time than I thought I will. But if I close you by three, we have looked odd. Is that not so? We have looked odd. So I had to keep trying to teach. Please, every one of you, just shake my hand in the name of the Lord. Go in his grace. Let the glory overshadow you. Let there be the testimony of the Lord upon your life. In the precious holy name of Jesus. Let it be said that God lifted you. Let it be said that he showed you help. He showed you mercy. Let it be said that you had ease in this assignment. In the precious name of Jesus. Let every declaration of today be established over your life. Over your assignment. In the holy name of Jesus. Receive the help of the Lord. Receive the ministry of the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Let the blessing that you have believed for abound with you. In the name of Jesus, I command testimony. Let it be fast. Let it be easy. In the name of Jesus, let there be enlargement of coast. Let there be a special touch from heaven. In the name of Jesus, let the blessing come upon you. Let it abound with you. In the name of Jesus, I command your answer. I command your testimony in the name of Jesus. Go in the power of his grace. Go and have your evidence in the name of Jesus. Let help come from everywhere, from anywhere, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will not lack. You will not need to beg or borrow. In the name of Jesus, the Lord command financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, the things that were difficult for others become easy for you. In the name of Jesus, the partners that have not been there multiply right now. 
in the name of Jesus, see easy in your journey. In the name of Jesus, see help for your next level. In the name of Jesus, see a dimension of prosperity you didn't think about. In the name of Jesus, the Lord show you help. The Lord show you lifting. The Lord show you the touch of his hand. In the name of Jesus, you won't struggle to rise. You will see exceptional ease in ministry. In the name of Jesus, receive what God has planned and receive it immediately. The blessing is upon you. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. amen. Two program announcements. Number one, Asaba will be in August. Asaba people... I don't know if any one of them came today. So if they are not here, maybe we'll go to you. But as I suppose we 16th, 15th and 16th of August, I am sure that uh, uh, they have stopped doing uh, sit at home. If they are still doing sit at home, I don't know how I'm going to get there on Monday 15th. But they should tell me now. So I don't uh, uh, promise what we cannot deliver. But as I, I suppose we 15th and 16th of August. Yeah, 15th and 16th. So please prepare for Saba. And... Uh, this is the first meeting we are doing outside the country since COVID. And that's South Africa Impact. It will be on Tuesday 20th and Wednesday 25th September. Anyone that wants a visa, uh, whether you have traveled before or not, see Martina and uh, we are trying to make sure that you wouldn't need to appear for the visa. Uh, we've actually talked to them. We are waiting for their reply. Are you with me? So if you send your passport and you pay the fees, I believe you can go with us. The way we do it is we don't pay anybody's flight or now you go pay your own. Are we clear? When we get there, I will stay with you until the weekend. Then we try to assign you to different churches of the pastors that come. We always appeal to them to take the people to preach there. They'll give you an honorarium as they please and you'll start building a relationship. If you want to stay longer, you'll stay longer. Are you with me? I go from one church to another, preach there, come back. But if you are going to look for money, you are going to fail. If what you are going to is to build a relationship, you will go there again and again. That's why I just told you now about lifetime value. Come on, are you with me? Those of you who don't have resources, that's a problem. You just want your money immediately and all that. You are checking how much you spent. But those who go there and build a relationship, they are the ones that keep traveling after. That's what you need. Am I clear? Uh, am I clear? So try and work on that. You say, well, I don't have money now. That's what is called investment. Invest in yourself. Travel. You have been landlord here for too long. Landlord, travel and see. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so now there's some of you that bet some vows. If you haven't made any for impact, please do. Whether it's 1000 a month, or 10,000 a month, or 5,000 a month, please do. This journey we're taking to South Africa, we are still the one to provide for our hotel. We're still paying our flight. We're still getting the, everything we need there. Every time we go to different cities, we hire our own hotel. Are you with me? Uh, are you here? We are not uh, going there because we are looking for anything from them. It's still the same pattern we are using, we are using there. In fact, South Africa is even worse. Because if you are going, I'm not going with my musicians, so we have to hire musicians. The last times we went there, all the times we went there, we hired musicians and all of that. So 
please be part of sponsoring this. And by next year, we'll do UK Impact. And please get set to travel with us. Start applying for the visa now. And we are trusting the Lord very soon. We'll just start moving. We are tired of just running around here. I think I have to raise your bar. Even if we can't go to UK, let's go to Ghana. Let's go to Togo. Let's go to Uganda, Kenya. Next year, we must do Kenya Impact. Are you with me? Why am I doing that? So that I can challenge you to start thinking beyond that your small circle and believe God to travel. Let there be that you left Nigeria once. With Buhari there, why won't you leave? Praise the Lord. Leave, leave this place for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So please, let's do that. Okay, the phone numbers are going to put on the screen for you in case you want to reach any one of us. Please don't send me a text or whatever asking about my number or anything. Just if you have a, a, any uh, something, the number there is my WhatsApp number. You can use it to send WhatsApp to me. God bless you. Uh, Okay, let me check if there's any other information I am missing out. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, many of you are not watching our pastor's hub. If you watch the pastor's hub today, your life will have changed. Please go back, even if it's on Facebook, and watch it. Go back. Just go back. Even if you are watching, you can scroll through to the last 10 minutes of the discussion and find every Tuesday whether we have impact or not we'll do a discussion section called Pastors Hub for one hour on YouTube. It is a life changing time. I teach more there than I even teach sometimes in impact because it's a question and answer it's a discussion thing so I want you to please be part of it. Somebody who is with us shout amen. Okay. Now I have a question. We can take it in the next few minutes. We close. So I think I've tried my best. Yes. Two. Three. And four. Okay. Five at the back and six in front. Seven over there. Eight. I don't think we can get close to that. But if I don't count you, think I don't like you. So we'll count all of you. Anywhere we stop, we stop. Number one is this way. Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You are supposed to make a presentation. Can you come around and do that now? Go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm Evangelist Fable. I want to ask this question. This happened to my ministry last two weeks ago. There was a, one of my members, her son went to the bush. And something took the boy on the leg, a very big stick. And the thing has not come out since then. And when that thing happened, the boy doesn't know when the thing happened, that something took him on the leg. So when he came back, he, he began to realize that he had a wound on the leg. So after pressing it, uh, hot water and takes on drugs, the thing did not still come out. Then they came to me for prayer. And before they come to me, the thing has even scratching the boy, even getting wider. As if it's a poison. So what's the question? So after I prayed for them, finish, I anointed oil. The thing came out the next day. The, the, the wife now took the thing to their pastor, said that uh, it is their pastor's prayer that did it. So to, what can I do? Now, praise the Lord. Uh, it is their pastor's prayer that did it. It's not your prayer. And stop looking for glory. If you start looking for glory in ministry, you won't go far at all. The only person that deserves glory is Jesus. Anytime you pray, back off. Even if people are trying to make you look like a big man of God, walk away. 
the moment you start having the, the atmosphere of I pray, something happens, you have finished your ministry. That's why some people you hear of today, you will hear of them of in five years. They are great men you had many years ago. The moment they became great in their own mind, they were done. It's only a question of time and God will just move on. But the person that keeps asking for mercy is sure to stay for long. So never, never, never again think in that area. The moment you pray for them, while they are coming to say thank you, you are saying thank you, Jesus. They are saying to you, you are great. You are saying, no, I'm not anything. No, it's just Jesus using me. Am I talking to somebody here? And you need to know yourself enough to know that. And that will help to keep you humble throughout your ministry. Number two. Where's number two? Thank you, sir. Papa, I want to ask you just started, I just started a walk new in Calabar and uh, you're having some these guys that they, they're like, they have money and you don't want to appear as if you, you're just pushing them to be part of the work and at the same time also as a new work, you need to do follow up and, but in the course of following them up it's like, oh you're trying to paste on them, how do you manage them? And at the same follow time, up so is not a begging for money. If your follow up is to get them their money, then your follow up motive is wrong. Your follow up is to build a relationship with them and see how you stabilize them in church. So reduce anything that has to do with money and gain their followership first. If you get them as members, they'll be giving regularly. But if you go there now trying to get them to give because they have money and all of that. They can give you arms and continue their journey. So get them to settle with you. Further them up. Sit down in their house. Share Bible verses with them. Open scriptures. Teach them some things. Every time you go there, let there be value dropped for them. And then find out that they will even like you coming. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. I was in uh, the U.S. a few days ago. And uh, I wanted to have a meeting with people who are interested in the church uh, over there. And then the pastor, when we had a meeting, uh, it may surprise you that uh, uh, less than 10% of the people that were there were Nigerians. So I... The person that uh, was helping me was talking about one couple, both of them are medical doctors, and are white people. And he said, oh, so, so, and so, the doctor had a problem. He led the doctor to Christ. And he said, you know, every time I will ask them to connect and all of that, they watch this, and I sit down and I review with them. Are you with me? And then suddenly they have become his disciples. Now, because they're his disciples, they become my own. I don't know if you're getting what I'm talking. That's what to do. So, follow them up. Disciple them. They become your own. Okay. Next one. Yeah, number three. Okay. Be fast. We have ten minutes. Thank you, Papa. Uh, in my former church, after I left the, after I left the place, uh, for some time, I begin to discover that the, the senior pastor in the spirit that is not happy with me. The way I used to see him in the, in the dream, he's not happy with me. One funny thing was last Saturday, last Saturday, after my midnight prayer, I, the man appeared to me in the dream. He said to me, I should come and see him. Otherwise, not, I will not do well. I asked him where. He said, I should come and see him in his house. And I opened my eyes. What will I do, sir? Well, if you believe that's a revelation from God, you go and see him. Your pastor is not your enemy. Your former pastor is not a witch. 
Your former pastor is not a child of the devil. One day, somebody is going to call you his former pastor. So let the person that will call you his former pastor tomorrow not treat you bad too. Not believe you are fighting him too. Am I talking to somebody here today? Because these things we sow, we will reap. Oh. Go to him. Take a seed. Bless him. Go again. Take a seed. Bless him. Go again. Take a seed. Bless him. The seed may just be fruits you bought and brought to him. It may just be drinks you brought to him. It doesn't, you can't give beyond what your level is. But keep that regular. And then just bridge whatever gap is between you and him and move on. You don't need any battles. A pregnant woman does not fight. When church is small, don't engage in battles. Praise the Lord. Next one, quickly. Are you guys too tired? Are you hearing what we're talking about? Yes. Papa, thank you, sir, for this privilege. My name is Desmond, Pastor Desmond. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first is, um, as we engage in, in evangelism, it's a new work. Uh, there are people who, although they are not the ones I'm preaching to, they just say, ah, I don't even have a church. They come around. So I share with them, say, Pastor, we'll come. But I don't get to see them. Sometimes the day before, on Sunday, I call and call. Ah, they just have one reason to give. About three, three families like that. So I'm wondering what's the issue. The excitement at the place of evangelism does not translate to them coming to the church eventually. What do I do? Uh, you keep going. You keep praying. You keep taking authority over the atmosphere. Listen. I've said this again and again. Any human being that makes decisions easily is not a serious person. Coming to church and settling down is a serious destiny commitment. People think it over. Those of them that jump in very quickly, after some time they just jump out. Allow them to make the choice and keep showing them that you are worthy to be their pastor. Go again, go again, go again and keep blessing them. After some time, they begin to know, I can trust this guy. But never give up. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. And don't think that because you went there one week and they haven't come. Even if they come today, it doesn't mean they're going to stay. There are people that have come to Gateway here again and again. And it took about five years of continual coming before they stayed. Are you with me? Every program they come, every program they come until one year, they say, let me I settle down here. So calm down and be taking authority over the territory. Maybe the territory is resisting you. So take authority, rebuke the territory, and then trust God. They will come. Never give up. Next person, please. Where is the person? Did you raise your hand the first time? Thank you, Papa. My name is Harold Alagwa. Um, nowadays, churches are trying to acclimatize their music by okay by copying the worldly sounds and rhythms um, i'm really concerned about rap music what do you really think about it is it necessary or can a child of god do rap music sir there's no music that's worldly there's no dance that is worldly unless it's uh, immoral is anybody hearing me there's no music that's worldly. It's a sound that somebody created. The problem is what are you doing with that sound? Is anybody still here? Uh, one time I went somewhere and somebody was talking about uh, singing hymns and uh, this and all of that and using all this worldly music and I said laughing. I said is that you don't know the history of the hymns you are talking about. I read this sankey that gave you Sankey sacred songs and solos, had only one method of writing song, not two, only one. Any music that had there any music in the state that time, he will write Christian lyrics and replace the worldly lyrics. When people are coming to you, they already have the tune. All they needed is a new word. So as he goes to crusade with D.L. Moody, 
I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Whatever song is raining that year, he will turn it to Christian song. They were persecuting him for that because it's like copyright infringement, but there's nothing they can do. It's crusade ground. He'll just sing it. So all the Sanki songs you are seeing today, we have the uh, tunes of the music that we are then in those days. Go read his history. But today we look at it as if there are the holy songs and the ones people are releasing today are the evil songs. It's just that music changes with season. Are you with me? There's nothing wrong with rap, sir. You can use it and make your semi rap is simply poetry. You didn't know that rap is simply poetry. Rap is simply the delivery of poetry. You wrote a poem and you are reading it out. That's rap. So it's not a bad thing. Don't demonize it. Next one, please. All right. Good morning, sir. My name is Frank Lebari. I have two questions. One is on um, we are one year church by God's grace, and then um, we are both 50. And I need to know what's the thin line between appreciation and complacency. Because there are times I want to like, Lord, there can be more. And there are other times I want to like, is it that I'm not appreciative of what we've seen for this one year? That's the first question. No, 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 no. I've defined contentment for you guys before. I said contentment is being grateful for where you are on the way to where you are going. A contented person is on a journey. But you are thanking God that you are not where you used to be, but you are now going somewhere. That's contentment. So you keep pushing and you keep thanking God for every grace to push. Thank you very much, sir. Then the second question, I was asked this while teaching in the foundation class last Sunday and I, I just you know, gave the little understanding I had. The difference between Hades, Hell, Shoel, and the lake of fire. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, Hades and Shoel are the same. They talk about the place of the departed spirits. Now, when you talk about uh, the lake of fire and all of that, let's explain. You see, uh, the Bible talks, us, uh, talks about in the place of the departed spirits, there are different compartments. Before Jesus died, we have the, what you call the uh, paradise, the place where the saints we are staying. It was still part of the compartment of Hades. Are you with me? But it wasn't a place of torment. There was another place of torment. I hope you are hearing me here today. And all of that. But then the lake of fire is called Tartarus. It's where you now uh, empty Hades at the end of time. Death and hell, we are cast into the lake of fire. Now, the departed saints, we are in paradise until Jesus came. He took them out and then went to present them to the Father. So the compartment there, I think, is empty till today. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. Are you with me? Yes, sir. That's uh, we are the purgatory thing flew from but that place is empty because jesus emptied it i don't know if you are getting what i'm talking about now the uh tartarus is virtually the same thing as uh gehenna gehenna still talks about uh hellfire it talks about uh the burnings that don't end it's just a picture that jesus gave because there was a valley the valley of hinnon in Jerusalem, where they used to throw refuse and they pour uh, fire into it, and it keeps burning continually like an unending fire. So he said, The fire is never quenched. It was a picture view of what happens when you throw things into Tartarus at the end, it keeps burning for all eternity. I don't know if you're getting what I'm talking about. So that's the something. So it's just this is when people die. Their spirits go to the place of departed spirits. That is shoal, hell. And then inside there, there's a compartment of trouble where the sinners are kept. And then in judgment, 
they, it, they are emptied back into hellfire after they are told what they did. That's all. Okay? I think, did you catch it well? Okay, God bless you. I think you can stop at this point so that you can have your time to sleep and those want to see one or two persons can see them. I believe God has been faithful to us. Stand to your feet, please. If you came for the first time, and I, please sit down first. Oh, yes, the brother I called. I almost forgot. Where is he? Please come. If you came for the first time,